In this video, we are going to tell you what is the best source of vitamin D. If you want to know, make sure you watch till the end. Meaty Lab Health Presence Prior to see the sources of vitamin D, you need to know the importance of vitamin D. Vitamin D plays important functions in many tissues. The major function of vitamin D is to regulate the provision of adequate calcium and phosphorus to the body. In addition, vitamin D has profound effects on the immune system, pancreas, brain, and muscle. There are two main forms of vitamin D. Ergocalciferol is the plant product, and chalecalciferol is animal-derived form. Ergocalciferol is also known as vitamin D2, and it has a circulating half-life around 8 to 12 days. Chalecalciferol is also called as vitamin D3, and has a half-life around 25 to 30 days. To prevent vitamin D deficiency, the National Academy of Medicine recommends that infants should immediately receive a daily supplementation of vitamin D of 400 international units during the first year of life. Individuals between 1 and 70 years should receive 600 international units of vitamin D daily, and adults above 70 years should receive a daily dose of 800 international units of vitamin D. Now let's see what are the sources of vitamin D. Actually, vitamin D can be synthesis within the human body, and also it can be taken outside. In 2007 Massachusetts Society of Medicine has published a list of different sources of vitamin D2 and D3. After this section, we are going to look at the best source of vitamin D. So, literature shows that sunlight is the best source of vitamin D. 20,000 international units of vitamin D is equivalent to exposure to one minimal erythymal dose in a bathing suit. Thus, exposure of arms and legs to 0.5 minimal erythymal dose is equivalent to ingesting about 3,000 international units of vitamin D3. The minimal erythymal dose means the minimum amount of UV radiation that produce redness of the skin. Exposure of human skin to solar UVB radiation leads to the conversion of 7-dehydrocholesterol to pre-vitamin D3 in the skin. Pre-vitamin D3 is then rapidly converted to vitamin D3 by temperature and membrane-dependent processes. Majority of the body's vitamin D requirements are fulfilled by this cutaneous production of vitamin D. But with this fact people might think they can get enough vitamin D without any effort as sunlight bath you in all daytime. But it is now. There are many endogenous and exogenous factors that regulate the cutaneous production of vitamin D. The major endogenous factor is melanin. Thus, melanin pigmentation in the skin competes for ultraviolet B photon and thereby decreases the efficiency for the synthesis of vitamin D. Age is another factor which regulate the vitamin D production. When healthy young and elderly adults were exposed to a whole body dose of the same amount of simulated solar radiation that was comparable with being at Cape Cod in Massachusetts on a sunny afternoon in the summer for about 15 minutes, the circulating concentrations of vitamin D increased to a maximum of 30 nanogram per milliliter within 24 hours in the young volunteers, whereas the older subjects aged 62 to 80 ease were only able to achieve a maximum concentration of 8 nanogram per milliliter. So, this happens due to the decline of vitamin D precursor in skin with the age. Aging has a dramatic effect on the skin. Skin thickness decreases linearly with age in humans after the age of 20 years. Have you ever know that? No, 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 no! 
During exposure to sunlight, solar ultraviolet B photons photolyze 7 dehydrocholesterol to pre-vitamin D3. However, pre-vitamin D3 can also absorb solar ultraviolet B photons, and therefore, during prolonged exposure to sunlight, pre-vitamin D3 liters is photolyzed principally to a biologically inert isomer, lumisterol. Thus, prolonged exposure to sunlight cannot cause the overproduction of pre-vitamin D3, because, once formed, the amount of pre-vitamin D3 is maintained in a quasi-photostationary state, that means, no more than 10 to 15 percent of the initial cutaneous concentrations of 7-dehydrocholesterol will be converted to pre-vitamin D3. It is well known that vitamin D deficiency is more prevalent during the winter months. People are in outdoors less frequently and wear more clothing, thereby decreasing the surface area exposed to sunlight, reducing the synthesis of Vit D. Apart from these factors the month of the year, exposure time of the day, and your living latitude might affect to your vitamin D status. By the way don't forget that, if you use sunscreen to protect from sun burns, that might certainly decrease your vitamin D synthesis in the skin. Finally, we have good news for you. That it is likely that in the future indoor lighting that contains ultraviolet B radiation in selected areas such as activity rooms, eating areas will be an important source of vitamin D for elderly people who cannot depend on environmental exposure to sunlight to provide them with their vitamin D requirement. So feel free to take little sun bath and get some vitamin D that's good for you. If you like to have a happy healthy life, don't forget to subscribe us. Let us meet in another video. Bye for now.